guys, this is Nadia Andreeva, and this is an interview series for Happy Belly Guide. We're celebrating the launch of the book, and I'm bringing you various experts in the fitness world, digestive health, and just really amazing, inspiring people to share tips about how they keep their belly happy. And today we have Maria Brilaki, who is the founder of Fitness Reloaded, and Maria is an expert in engineering healthy habits. All of us need healthy habits if you want to have a happy belly. Maria is a Stanford engineering graduate, a certified personal trainer, and has an MBA. She's an author of the book, Surprisingly Unstuck, having already helped 10,000 people to rebuild their daily habits. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what Maria does personally to keep her belly happy and also how we can start changing habits um, to build habits that help you keep your belly happy. So thank you, Maria. Oh, I thank you. How are you? Good. <laughs> so um, tell me, what does a happy belly mean for you? A happy belly means I feel nourished and satisfied. Mm -hmm. I don't feel hungry. I feel just right. Okay. Is it mostly physical? Um, it's physical and psychological too. I mean, those two are connected. Yeah. Uh, so it's both. I can okay. tell you what makes my belly unhappy. We'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> but before that, let's see. Why do you think it's important to have a happy belly? What happens when it's not happy? Well, when my belly is not, hum uh, is not happy, then I get grumpy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if my belly is not happy, then uh, my mood may go down. I might get uh, angry. Not angry, but irritated. Yeah more easily. Uh, so I get all those symptoms. And so, so when I found myself in these situations, I'm like, am I hungry? Or what have I eaten? Because food helps me feel better. Yeah. When I don't take care of what I eat, then this has an impact. Yeah, yeah, so true. So let's move on to what foods make your belly happy. I, well, I don't have specific preferences. Okay. So I eat almost everything. Mm -hmm. I find that my belly gets happy or unhappy depending a lot of times on how, on why I eat these specific foods. Okay. Give me an so, example. Yes. Yeah, so let's take pasta, for example. I like yeah. this example. If I eat pasta because it's just a quick dish to prepare, and there's nothing else. So I don't really want to eat it, but there's nothing else available or as easily available, so I just eat pasta. Mm -hmm. Then my belly is not going to be happy. So okay. even though I'm going to fill myself with pasta and you know sauces or whatever, I'm not going to be happy. But if I eat pasta, because I want to eat pasta and that's what I wanted to eat, and you know I'm thinking about how I'm going to prepare and all that stuff, mm -hmm. then I'm happy. So it's the same food, but depending on how I approach it, I might get happy or unhappy after eating it. Interesting. So for you, it's more whether you listen to your body or you don't listen to your body. Exactly. So when you listen to your body and your body says that I want something and you don't give it, then it's not happy. Yes. But sometimes it's also, it also has to do with planning. Okay. So if you didn't plan in advance, then you might want something, let's say, better or something different, but... It's too late. You're hungry, yeah. you have to eat something, and you don't have like two or three hours ahead to prepare. Yeah. So it's a combination. Okay. So let walk us through your day, or walk us maybe even through your week. So you know things that make your belly happy, and mm -hmm. you know that, for example, not being ready, not having the foods that you want to eat makes it unhappy. So how would you plan? Because you have a busy life. You have a book. You have thousands of people that are looking up to you. Um, how do you make sure that you have time to have healthy meals that your body wants to eat? It's something I built up over time. Mm -hmm. So a few years ago, I, I didn't take care of what I ate. And that's how I gained weight. Mm -hmm. And that's actually how I went from engineering to fitness. Um, and at that point, I didn't have a happy belly, and that's why I was gaining weight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but also, I hated cooking. Okay. I, you know, the thought of just planning my food was so overwhelming. And I was one of those people who would say, if we could just have foods in pills, 
so we can just pop a pill and not have to think about anything. So I didn't even want to go to the restaurant to order foods. That uh -huh. was even that was a hassle. If I could just take a pill, so I could just keep my work, you know, take my pill, I'm done, check, and keep doing whatever I was doing. That would be great. Yeah. So I had to build it up. And the How way did you did, start? Yes. Uh, so the way I did this was that I, because I hated cooking. I realized that one of the reasons I hated it was that I thought it was a lot of hassle. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about what to prepare, you have to go to the grocery store, have the list of ingredients with you, try to locate them in the grocery store, and then come at home, cook it, you know, check with the rest, make sure you're doing it right. <sighs> Big hassle. So yeah. my strategy was that I decided I would master one recipe, just one, but I would do it so well. Mm -hmm. I would be like a pro. I would be like my grandma. Okay. So this way, I and your grandma be... is from Greece, right? Yes. And the cooking there is hard to beat. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to do it so well that I didn't need to look at the recipe. Mm -hmm. So you know, when you know how to do something and you have done it like a bazillion times, you're like bam, 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 and you do yeah. one step after the other. You don't think about it. So it's like driving. When you're first driving, you need to think about everything. Like how do you turn? How do you park? But when you're like an experienced driver, you just drive and your mind thinks about other things. Mm -hmm. And the same thing can happen with cooking. And once this thing happens to you, then cooking something stops being a hassle. Yeah. It's something you do and you don't find it's such a big deal. You just do it. So I started with one recipe and the recipe was uh, organic Greek lentils. Okay. That's how I started. And I did this for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So I would cook did lentils. Did you just eat only lentils? No. So I would cook lentils once a week. And okay. then the rest of the days, I would just keep eating out. Mm -hmm. So I didn't just try to start cooking at home five days a week, okay. eating lentils seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> but I would do it once a week. And then once I got the hang of lentils and I didn't need to think about oh, do we use onion or do we do that and what yeah. comes first, you know. And I was like, bam, bam, bam. Then I started adding more recipes. Mm -hmm. And before I knew it, I could cook every day. And it was not a big deal. So now I go to the supermarket in the weekends. I usually plan for three days in advance. Mm -hmm. I get anything, everything I want. And then three days later, I go to the supermarket again, get the ingredients. And I'm on my way. So I plan my weeks because if I don't, I don't want to end up eating pasta and feeling unhappy. Yeah. And I think it's a big deal for a lot of people. A lot of people think that it is very overwhelming to get the food, to choose what you want, to plan, and then they end up eating frozen food or going out. Um, exactly. So when you plan now, when you plan that I'm going to go to the store, um, do you have recipes in mind or you just choose what looks good and then come up with recipes later? So I do both. Sometimes okay. I know in advance that I'm going to cook this food next week, so I need to get those ingredients. Some other times I go to the supermarket because I know I need to go and I'm there thinking, hmm, what am I going to cook this week? <laughs> so I'm figuring it out on the go. Okay. I, that's, yeah. yeah, that's that's really interesting and I think for people when they're either looking to lose weight or to improve their digestion cooking at home is such an essential step because you never know what's in the food when you're eating out um, and also you end up eating less yeah. so when you're used especially for people who live in the US and the portions being so huge yeah so when you go out to eat here like you have this huge, huge portion in front of you and you don't want to just leave it because at least my parents were telling me of the children in Africa. I you know. Cook, you know, I found that this is very true for many cultures. Parents say there are children in Africa who are hungry. Even so you know, have to leaving the food on your plate does not make children in Africa any fuller. Exactly. So you have this feeling that you need to finish it up even if yeah. you're not hungry. And boom, before you know it, you didn't, you didn't take care of the ingredients. So you ate whatever you were served. And also... You ate more than what would you like to eat and you're gaining weight. Yeah, and I think um, another thing is that most of us are too lazy to cook an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. Um, and in the restaurant, it's really easy to say, well, let's split a dessert, let's split an appetizer, and then you get an entree, so you have this huge meal. 
Um, well, so restaurants are engineered to make you order. Yeah. So we don't we don't normally think about that, but restaurants are businesses, and the more you order, the more they make. Yeah. So they make it so that it's easy for you to just keep ordering food and then also drink some wine, you know, uh, whatever. Yeah. Well, let's let's break it down a little bit. So if somebody yes. is trying to break a habit of eating out mm -hmm. or eating frozen food or ordering in. What what do you think are the small things that they can focus on besides choosing, okay, I'm going to experiment with one recipe? Is there something else that would be helpful? Besides, so I think that you shouldn't overwhelm yourself mm -hmm. because cooking is overwhelming. So if you try to do too much when you're getting started, then you might just end up going back to eating out. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when we try to bite more than we can chew. Yeah. So I think that if people focus on one recipe, so pick a, a recipe you like that is not too hard to make, mm -hmm. just focus on this. Forget about everything else. You don't have to have distractions. It's okay to keep eating out. You've been doing this for so long. You know, doing it for a few more months won't help you. Yeah. Just, you know, tackle this one thing, single focus. And this will make such an improvement. Yeah. And I think Another thing that's really important to mention, which your lentils was such a good choice, because if you choose a dish that's not a full-on meal, then you're not going to feel satisfied. So if you choose like roasted Brussels sprouts, you're probably not going to have a full meal of Brussels sprouts. Oh yeah, of course. So it has to be a recipe that can actually give, like, turn into a real meal. Exactly. So you eat this food and then you feel satisfied and you're not hungry. Yeah. 15 minutes later or and an I, hour later. Yeah. So, and two things that while you were talking about it that came to my mind is slow cooker for me has been incredibly helpful because I just throw in stuff and my lunch and dinner is ready and I eat usually the same thing for both lunch and dinner. Okay. Um, so slow cooker is really good. But then choosing a recipe that you like and that tastes good is such an important step because then you're not likely to feel like you're depriving yourself and look for other health like tasty things um, so I think you should really really like it that's true and also what helped me was yeah. that um, so I chose a food lentils that I used to eat at home when I was in Greece so whenever I would cook lentils my home would just smell like home. You know, when you're cooking at home, your home smells more like home. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. Yeah. So it was an overall good experience. Every time I did this, I was like, I like this. I like taking care of myself and I like my home being home. Yeah. So it really helped. Yeah, so it was more nourishment, not only the physical nourishment, but also the emotional nourishment of the meal. Yes, I was in alignment because I did, I, so I, you have some values as you grow up yeah. and, you know, some memories too. And I chose the right foods to, you know, be my first step towards cooking at home, seven well, days. <laughs> yeah, that, that's really good. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about habits. So a yes. lot of people um, have a habit which really hurts their digestion, which is overeating. Um, overeating, yes. Yeah, because it's, especially if you eat out or if you're in the office and there's a cafeteria, um, like you said, most of us will finish whatever is on the plate. What do you think is the right way to start building a strategy to giving up that habit? Because most people, they still will eat at the cafeteria when they're working. Um, what is the right way to start reminding yourself, like, I need only this much food? Well, first of all, you need to make food less available. Okay. So if, let's say, you have candies that are within an arm's reach from your desk, take them away. Because if they're next to you, then you're going to eat more, and that has been proven by studies. So okay. if you have food, like, right next to you, and especially if it's visible, mm -hmm. so if it's not in a jar that you cannot see what's inside, but it's visible, you're much more likely to eat even though you don't feel hungry, just because it's there. Because eating is a habit, that means it's automatic, you don't think about it, mm -hmm. just do it. So just like you wear your seatbelts when you get in the car, you don't think about wearing your seatbelt, you just wear it. Once you see the car setting, mm -hmm. that's the trigger that makes you put the seatbelt on. Same thing with, ha uh, with eating. 
you see the candy, you eat the candy or whatever that was, yeah. don't even think about it. And then you're like, why did I just eat? Or how I finished this bag, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so take it out of sight. Take it out of sight, make it less available. Then also when you order food, especially in the US, mm -hmm. and if the, meat, if the portions are big, tell to the waiter to bring you half of it and put the rest of it in a box to go. Mm -hmm. What this if you don't know if it's going to be big or small? Uh, what if you, okay. So but if you eat yeah, out, you yeah. don't have control over, let's say, the size of the plates. Because if the plate is small, mm -hmm. then you're likely to eat less than if the plate is big. Because the same amount of food in a smaller yeah. plate looks like more food. So you're, you somehow feel more satisfied. Mm -hmm. So if you can say, you know, to change, if you tell the waiter to put it in a smaller plate, that's going to help. Okay. But um, also make sure, uh, take care of what you order. Mm -hmm. Ordering salads first helps because you eat the salad and then you feel like you ate, even though yeah. you haven't eaten much, you feel less hungry when you eat like the rest, the, your main course. Ordering healthy is another thing because there are some foods, you know, especially the ones with sauces and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not that they're unhealthy, but sometimes they're calorie bombs. Yeah. And but I think for a lot of people who do have problems with digestion, high fat, high sugar sauces are also causing lots of digestive problems because they're really hard to digest. They will get heartburn and bloated feeling. Um, so I'm totally with you. If you can avoid the sauce, avoid it. <laughs> Unless it's yes. guacamole. I love guacamole, yes. So that too. Uh, so listen to, your, and also another thing that has helped me mm -hmm. is making a habit of asking small questions to yourself. Okay, tell me. Say, uh, when you eat, ask yourself, or when you see your food, do I need all of this? But make a habit of just asking yourself. You don't have to say no to the question, no, I don't need all of it. But just make it a habit to ask yourself, do I need this? Do I really need this? And this way you bring mindfulness to the process of eating. Yeah. And then you're less likely to just keep eating and while your mind is thinking about work or other things. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, you know, I ate so much. Yeah, I love the idea of checking in with yourself because even if you, most of the time when you eat, your attention is either in the mouth or on the TV or on the computer. It's very rarely in your stomach. So when you start paying attention to the stomach and breathing, it becomes a lot easier to say if you're full or not. Yes, and now that you say this, um, another way to do this is to just slow down. Yeah. Slow down and focus on the pleasure of the food. So focus on the taste and how it feels, try to, you know, not think about other things for a few minutes and really focus on the food and take it slowly. And this will, will make such a huge impact because most of us see food as utilitarian. Yeah. Just like I was. Oh, let me take a pill. So, you know, I take my nourishment and then, you know, I just keep on with my work. For me, at that point, food was not pleasure or something mm -hmm. enjoyable, it was something utilitarian, something I had to do to keep myself going. Yeah. But if you try to make it a little bit more pleasurable, because food can be very pleasurable, but to do it, you have to focus on it. And this, again, will bring the mindfulness you need so that you will slow down and yes, you will eat less, but also you eat, you're more likely to eat foods that really make your belly happy instead of making your belly unhappy. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, what did help you to shift from the utilitarian perspective into more this is my time to like show love to my body and myself? How do you make the shift? Yeah. Well, what first triggered the shift for you? Oh, what triggered the shift? <sighs> well, first of all, the, the, the meals you cook at home just feel so much healthier than the ones you get outside. And it's a, it's a, you have to acquire the taste. So I, I was used to eating out and I didn't respect home-cooked food. 
because I was just used to eating out. But as soon as I started cooking, mm -hmm. I started gaining respect for it because it feels different. I don't know how to explain it for people who go at home or yeah. do a, a mix, they will probably understand what, I, what I'm talking about. So this was the first step. When I started, you know, my palate was starting getting used to more pure foods. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, one step brings another. So I started getting used to that and then I started thinking, hey, this feels good. I mean, we don't just do it to keep ourselves going. We're not machines. We're also doing it, you know, for our soul. Yeah. And so I started focusing on it. And now that takes years. So three years later, now I try to eat without distractions. Mm -hmm. Or So I don't eat at my desk which is what I used to do. I, you know, I will go to a specific table and just focus on the food. Like this is my eating time and I respect that. This makes a huge difference and it's all, it's all connected. I mean, you do one step and then one step brings another. Yeah. I, I really like that, that don't eat at the desk. It's such, such a huge step. So, um, Thank you so much for sharing all the tips. If people want to get more fitness tips or about habits, where can they find you? They can find me at fitnessreloaded.com. Uh, if they would like to exercise more, they can sign up for my program, exerciseblaze.com. Okay, wonderful. And guys, make sure to download your free chapters from the Happy Valley Guide that are free. And then check out both of our books, Unstuck and Happy Belly <laughs> Guide on Amazon. I'm sure you're going to love both. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see all other Happy Belly interviews. Thank you. Bye-bye.